If you like this video please give a thumbs up and subscribe. Hit the bell icon to be notified of new videos. My channel is having a contest when I hit 250 subscribers one lucky person will get $100. All you need to do is be subscribed to enter it is super quick and easy. Good luck to all. Winfrey, we're talking today with Harvard University psychiatrist John Mack, who studied the cases of about 100 people, at least, who claim that they've been abducted by aliens. One of Dr. Mack's patients, Randy, here says his abduction occurred while he was awake. He is here with his sister, Glinda, who says she, too, has been abducted since childhood. Since what age? Do you remember? Glinda, 5. Winfrey, 5 years old. And at 5 years old, what happened? Some of what Dr. Mack was described earlier here? Glinda, right. I had a conscious conscious I consciously remembered my experience when I was 5. Winfrey, mm him. Glinda, and, but I had bits of it that were missing. And what I what I remember is that through my wall came some beings around my bed. And I ran between them and ran out of the room into my mother's room to hide from them. And what happened is they followed me in there. And that's the last I remember of it. However, it's interesting because, after that, I never told anybody about that. And I just buried it in, in in the back of my mind. And me and my brother, we never even spoke about it until the last few years. Winfrey, why? Randy? Randy, I first told my mum and dad when something, when I was 10 years old, something happened. And I told my mum and dad. Winfrey, do you remember when he told you? You're Randy's mum. Randy's mother, yes. Winfrey, what did he tell you? Stand up, please. Randy's mother, well, back about a co a couple of years ago. Winfrey, aha. Randy's mother, my daughter was living at a distance away from home. And she had picked up the book, Communion. Winfrey, aha. Randy's mother, and she said she was it disturbed her. So I tried to get a connection. Winfrey, which daughter? Glinda? Randy's mother, Glind. Winfrey, mm him. Glinda, yeah. Couldn't sleep at night. Randy's mother, so I read the book. And my son happened to a real walk in for dinner. And my husband and I were there. And I said, back quote, geez, this is so stirring. And he said, back quote, well, don't you remember when I was 10 years old? And it was like it was put way in the back of our mind. And we both said, back quote, oh, yeah. I remember him coming up to our room and Winfrey and saying, Randy's mother, dot and saying there was a spaceship outside and there were little guys around his bed. Randy's mother, and they put the dog to sleep. Which sounds bizarre. Now. Winfrey, a little more than bizarre. Yeah. Randy's mother, oh, it does. Winfrey, very. Yeah. Randy's mother, but but so my husband went outside. Winfrey, so when he told you at 10, you said, back quote yeah, right, honey. Randy's mother, no. My husband went outside thinking it was probably an intruder. I settled there wasn't an intruder, so we found. I settled him down for sleep and we never thought another thing about it until. Winfrey, there was or was not an intruder? I didn't hear you say. Randy's mother, there was not. Winfrey, was not an intruder. Randy's mother, not that we were aware of. Winfrey, so you told him that. Randy's mother, so I'm sure I. Winfrey, it was his imagination. Randy's mother, I don't even remember telling him that. Randy, no. Winfrey, what do you remember, Randy? Randy, she that was that's pretty much it. But, I mean, I ran up to their room completely terrified. Because they they had put me out for a little over an hour, and when I came to you know, I ran first thing was I didn't know if I was going to get upstairs where my mum and dad's room were was. I mean, it was that kind of fear. And and yeah. This is I have a hard time with this. Winfrey, why? Randy, because I don't want to believe it. I really don't. Winfrey, why? Because I'm thinking I wouldn't mind it happening to me. Randy, yeah. That's what everybody says. Glinda, well, it hasn't happened to you. If it happened to you, you'd feel different. Randy, that's what everybody says. But it I mean, it's totally made me question what life's about. And it it, it stirred my life up a lot. And. Winfrey, so when it happened at 10, you always believed profoundly. Randy, no. I hoped there was I hoped there was something wrong. And I had a lot of I went through a lot of testing and things to find out whether something was wrong. 
Winfrey, so that was the first time it happened times again. Yeah? Randy, yeah. Glinda, they didn't find anything wrong. Winfrey, yeah. Randy, mm hm. Winfrey, and so. Randy, and then it was 1990 when they came again. And I was probably conscious for five seconds before they put me out. Winfrey, so you were awake? Randy, yeah. Winfrey, and what happened? Randy, they they came in. I don't know where they came from. I mean, they were there so fast. Winfrey, where were you? Randy, I was just laying down on my bed. I just just come down to my bedroom. I had just laid down and it was instantaneous. They were just there. And wow. It I, I just went into shock. I thought I was going to die. My my life flashed before my eyes. And I just I remembered all the times that they had been there before to, to get me. And and then they put me out. And I just remember bits and pieces of what occurred after that point, very fragmented. But what blows my mind is meeting other people that it's happened to. That's what blows my mind. Because I talk to them and they know what I'm talking about. They they've they can they're describing the same things. And it just blows my mind. I mean, how I mean, I, I wish this was not happening but I am getting so much what do you call it? Evidence from just from talking to other people that this is not UN, this is not uncommon, and this is. Winfrey, I know. But still, all of us watching and hearing you now. Randy, I know. I I. Winfrey, daughter thinking but where is the proof? Randy, I wish I had it. Glinda, right. Well, the on. Winfrey, it's just you saying it. Why don't if it happens it happens all the time. Dr. Mack will, you know, challenge this if when we come back, why not take a picture of them? Why not bring? Glinda, we have. Randy, I've I've done I've tried. I'm pretty good with electronics and I tried with cameras, motion censored cameras, video cameras. Glinda, tripwires. Randy, everything. Article number 2 Have people really been abducted by aliens? Let's talk about that. Musical note, theme music, musical note, nasally, good. Mythical. Morning. The universe is a huge place. Normally, oh, yes. We don't even know how huge it is or how big it's becoming. Current estimates say there are 100 octillion stars. That's quite a few. That's one with 29 zeros after it. Big number. So odds are there's some other life out there. But the question is, has that life found us, come in contact with us? There's a lot of people who say, yes. Now, personally, I don't believe this has happened, but me neither. A lot of the stories that I've heard before are like Uncle Hank, you know, the guy who has no hair on top of his head but he has a lot of hair in the back and he has a koozie with him all the time. He's got an alien abduction story. Yeah. But not all alien abduction stories are like Uncle Hank's. MMMM. They are sometimes more sophisticated and harder to just dismiss. And we're gonna be talking today about we each have a story that we think is more difficult to dismiss than your uncle with the koozie. MMHM. Yeah. So I'll start. I've found. This is one of the first alien abduction stories, and I'm gonna go with this one because I think there's some convincing things to it. Postman Barney Hill and his wife Betty were driving back from Canada. They were in New Hampshire. It was at night around 10 p.m. They see this star that's moving erratically. Okay. Gruffly, that ain't no star. Normally, so they pull over at a rest area. Now let me point out that's nice. Here's a picture of the couple. They're not at the rest area in this, this is a posed picture, not at a rest area. Okay. Link, would this couple lie to you? Rhett, they seem trustworthy. Link, they seem trustworthy. Look at the dash and in Betty's lap. I mean, Rhett, okay, he's not gonna tell a lie. And he's not gonna suffer any liars or sit in the lap of a liar, so that's point one right there. That is scientific. They stop at the rest area. They have a dash and. Barney gets out his binoculars and starts looking at this thing. He estimates he had binoculars? Yeah, of course he did. Were they around his neck already? Of course. He's a postman, with a dash and. Red and crew laugh, he estimated it was a 40 foot long craft with flashing colors and it had windows. As it was getting closer to him because yes, it was getting closer to him he could see that there were beings inside of it. Okay. Gets back in the car and says, they're gonna capture us. And then they start driving off. 
they start to experience beeping, buzzing, and then there's like a tingling sensation and a vibration of the car. They were at Brookstone in the massage chairs. Crew laughs, no, they were in their car. Silly voice, we're in Brookstone, baby. Laughs, they were driving. They were driving down the road and then all of a sudden, they go into what they describe as a state of their minds being dulled. Oh. So their minds are dulled. And then. Okay. There's a second set of beeping and buzzing, and I'm telling you what I think happened is that they were slurps, sucked up in that's what you think happened, huh? Sucked up into the, into the craft. Well that's what they think happened. No, they didn't know at this point. So then they keep driving, but they realize that they are now, seemingly instantaneously, 35 miles south of where they had started. Whoa. With no recollection of traveling those 35 miles. That's not Brookstone. They arrive at home and then they start to notice that they have some uncontrollable impulses and thoughts. Like, Betty's packing a suitcase and putting it by the door. She's having nightmares of UFO abductions. Barney was compelled to check his genitalia. P.S.H.H.H. Giggles, okay, all right. That's quite a compulsion. That is a healthy compulsion to check it every now and again. Yeah, 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 it is. Crew laughs but. Laughs, you should check it. I mean. He didn't find anything, but he was compelled to check it. Yeah. And only after the beeping and the buzzing and the. Yeah, right, okay. So, get this. I get ya, Barney. I understand. Betty calls the local Air Force base. Why not? And they answer. Silly voice, hello, Air Force. I mean, like. We don't have any massage chairs. Laughs, how is this possible? But seriously, she calls the Air Force base. Major Paul W. Henderson says. Normally, real guy. The UFO was also confirmed by our radar. After she describes their experience. And that just means, unidentified flying object. He said, the UFO was also confirmed by our radar. Okay, all right. Then they decide to undergo. They try to account for what they believe to be two hours of lost time and 35 miles. They go into regressive hypnosis and they both have the same stories. They're drawing sketches. This is a sketch that Barney drew of the leader, he called it. Ret H.M. It's a snake with a beret. Laughs, yeah. French accent, it's a French snake. He's a postman, he's not a ooh la la, Barney. He's not an artiste. So, basically, they come to the conclusion that they've been abducted by aliens. They remember through regressive hypnosis that they took their skin, hair, nail, samples, bodily fluid samples. Oh. Here's the thing, guys. I get you, Barney. This is a typical alien abduction story, except it was the first one. Right. And they kinda had to figure it out. They weren't building on other previous stories. Other people emulated them. Even that picture, that picture of the snake with the beret. Totally original. Totally seriously, totally original. Yeah. The Air Force confirmed that there was something on the radar. And the Da shunned. The Datsun, people. How do you say that, dog? You say Datsun, you don't say Da shunned, I don't think. That's how you spell it, though. I mean, believe. So that's what it comes down to for them. Dramatically, believe the Dachshund. They have a dashend. All right, I've got a story. They corroborated, you know, in their regression. This is the Travis Walton story. A very famous, probably the most famous UFO abduction, alien abduction story back from November of 1975. He's clearing trees, kind of a blue collar guy. He's clearing trees. Literally, he's wearing a blue collar. Ret, yes. Link, and the plaid shirt. Ret, yeah. He was a logger. He's clearing trees in Arizona with seven other guys. They finish their shift, they get into a truck. Big pickup truck, seven guys. They're heading down the road and they see, quote, a luminous object, shaped like a flattened disc. Travis saucer. I call that a flying, snaps, saucer. Travis gets out and approaches the saucer. Of course he does because he's a lumberjack. And the rest of the guys stay in the truck. They see a speaking of blue collar, a blue beam hit him. Beam of light knocks him down. They freak out, the other six guys. They drive off. After a while, they're like, maybe we should go, get Travis. They ditched him. Wouldn't you? They're scared. 
they go back. He's nowhere to be found. So they immediately go to the police in the nearest town. They say, our buddy, they tell him the whole story. Our buddy was hit with this beam of light. And they're like, these dudes are nuts. But maybe something's going on. They start a manhunt. It ends up being the largest manhunt in Arizona history. Travis Hunt. Five days of looking for Travis, but at the same time, they're like, of course these guys didn't really experience a UFO situation, right? They killed him. They suspected that they murdered him. They teamed up on him and murdered him in their typical logger way of telling the story was, southern accent, hey man, let's say he got abducted by aliens. That'll be believable. Southern accent, blue beam o light. Let's get our story straight. Normally, so they polygraph them, give them a lie detector test. Five out of six, of the guys pass the test. Normally, oh, so the sixth one, killed him. No. And one of the guys who was there it was just inconclusive. He didn't finish the test because he was kind of, emotionally shaken up. Of course he was. Now, the guys who administered he just killed a man. Administered these tests said, we are thoroughly convinced that these men believe that he was abducted by aliens. They saw they did not kill him. They, believe that this is what has happened. Okay. Meanwhile, what happens to Travis? Well, five days pass and all of a sudden he wakes up in front of a local gas station with an incredibly detailed story naked. Of what had happened. I think he still was clothed. He still had that blue shirt on, I'm pretty sure. Here's what he remembers, first of all, it's an incredibly detailed story. I'm just gonna give you some of the highlights. First of all, they didn't kill him, because he's back. He's back. So there you go. He remembers being on a table thinking he's in a hospital room, but that he looks up and he sees aliens that, quote, looked like fetuses. Ooh. Caring for him. So the old fetus alien, you know? He gets scared, not because they're aliens, but because they're, fetus aliens. Oh, yeah. And he picks up a glass cylinder on a shelf and begins yelling at them and, waving the glass cylinder. A flask? And they leave. Just a glass cylinder. I don't know what that's for. Like a luminary that you put like a little. I don't have a picture. It was on the alien ship. Okay. I'm going off Travis's testimony here. Got it. He waves it at them like a magic wand. They go out of the room, and then he says, claps, I got this spaceship to myself. Laughs, he walks down a hallway, goes into a room. Crew laughs, he's a penguin. And there's a room with a chair in the middle with a lever. Of course there is. Or a lever. This is like a cartoon. I gotta say, Travis, at this point it sounds like a cartoon. But you know what? I'm gonna keep going. A barber chair. He gets into the barber chair. He pulls the lever and all of a sudden it starts a light show of stars like he's at the planetarium, basically. Laughs, he should have had a woman with him, cause this would have been a great first date. You know, one of my best first dates was at the planetarium. Learn her a little something. Yeah, it's like, silly voice, oh, look at the stars. Look how small we are. We're so small, but me and you are right here, next to each other in the planetarium. No one will know anything we do. Laughs, normally, yeah, that's right. That's what happened. There was no date though. Eventually he starts thinking, maybe I should get out of here. He starts walking around the craft a little bit more. He finds this, quote, tall human character wearing blue overalls and a glassy helmet, I don't know what that was about. But then he finds more of those guys. They end up, putting a gas mask farmer. Farmer aliens. Yeah, with glass helmets. They put a gas mask deep sea diving farmer aliens. Gas mask on him. He gets knocked out and the next thing he remembers, he wakes up at the gas station. Gas mask, gas, station, I don't know, maybe, ha ha. But he still maybe not. Laughs, and he thinks that two hours have passed, but five days have passed. Whoa. Does he still have the flask in his hand? Like he comes to an. He did not bring the glass cylinder with him. Not a flask, blink. And he did not have the lever with him. But he had a story that he turned into a book called The Walton Experience, he had quite a story. That then was turned into a TV show, a long-running TV show called The Waltons. Multiple voices, good night, Jim Bob. No, actually it was turned into a movie called Fire in the Sky back in the 90s. This guy is a celebrity amongst this community. 
you can go online, you search this guy on YouTube and there's him talking at UFO conventions. He's still like a celebrity who tells his story. Most of these guys, as part of the crew, have maintained their testimony. There's one guy that's a little squirrely, but most of them have maintained their testimony. He's still in prison for murdering him. And he's trying to get fire in the sky remade. Sequel? Or a remake? Cause he wants it to be accurate. He wants it to be accurate. Like, visually accurate? Or the story wasn't right? He wants all the details to be, he wants the flask to be just right. Laughs, he wants the fetal aliens to be right. Why should I believe this one? I mean, there were no binoculars. There's no dashand. Well, there is a movie, though. I mean, he made it into a movie and wrote a book. Right, 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 okay. And he has a moustache. He has a very, very thick moustache. So there's nothing he has maintained his moustache over the past 40 years in the same way he has maintained his story, Link. Oh? I mean, if the moustache started to give a little bit, I'd be, oh, I don't believe you, but if you keep the moustache strong, the story stays strong. I don't know. I'm grasping. But he wears a suit now. I'm grasping at glass cylinders here. Yeah, lets and levers. In the planetarium. PTHBBT. So, Barney and Betty, you got my vote. I don't know. Debate away. Ha. Debate away. Thanks for liking and commenting. You know what time it is. I'm Doug from Mesa, Arizona and it's time to spin the wheel of mythicality. 9 out of 10 people report that wearing a good mythical morning t-shirt while watching good mythical morning gives them a better experience. Click through to good mythical more, where we say what it would take for us to actually believe in alien abductions. Wow, you got a lot going on over there. Get a mythical mug, wear the shirt this way if you want to. Ret in a world without pancakes. Oh. Dramatically, in a world without pancakes. Eat a waffle. I mean, it's pretty obvious. Captioned by Catron, GMM Captioning Team, Article Number 3 Oprah Winfrey, Dr. Mack's new book is called, Abduction. Peter, who has worked as a chef, as a hotel manager, and as a therapist says that he was first visited by aliens when he was 8 years old. He continues to have encountered as an adult. And yes, he believes that beings from other planets have been intimate with him. So even though they have been scared out of their minds, Peter and others we're going to hear from today say that their lessons from the aliens have enriched their lives in ways that they would like to share with us. And that is what we're here to hear from you. You know, it's you know how crazy it sounds. I said to you, as we started the show, this is really either pretty brave of you, or it's one of the great publicity stunts of our time. Because to go on television and to admit that you have been abducted, in a world where people don't even most people, I think, don't accept that as a part of reality or possible reality, puts you in a pretty pretty good position to be ridiculed. Yes. Laughs Oprah Winfrey, yeah. And Oprah Winfrey, so are you scared about that? Are you I used to be scared about it? But it's really important now to talk about it because I realize there are lots of people out there like myself, who a few years ago had these experiences and didn't know what to do with them. Yes, but what I'm what I wanted to hear from you, or I'm trying to hear from you is whether or not you understand how crazy it sounds to us? Absolutely. Okay. I had to deal with my own craziness and to think it was crazy for me to think this before I could talk to other people about it. So when it first happened to you, is it something that you absolutely were sure of? Or did it feel like a dream? Or did you what? I wasn't sure. I had a conscious memory. I knew something happened in the middle of the night that I couldn't explain, that nowhere in my imagination could I have made this up. And I just sat with that for a long time. You say in or you were quoted in Dr. Mack's book, I remember, as saying that you always did believe somehow in guardian angels, that as a child you thought they were just guardian angels, and that has always believed that you had some way of talking to God. That's what as I remember the quote. That's not exactly the quote but something like that. So do you remember when you were 8 years old being abducted or when you were younger feeling this whatever? No. I had memories of when I was an adult, 3 or 4 years ago. And then in regression is when I went back in time, saw myself as a child having the abductions from the time I was about 8 years old. Oprah Winfrey, okay. So more and more came out under regression. Okay. Can you tell me what you remembered when you were regressed? I remember a light hitting me in the forehead, aliens in my room, being lifted into a spaceship. Oprah Winfrey, what did they look like? 
Did they look like they did in Close Encounters of the Third Kind? No. Oprah Winfrey, no? Similar, but not quite the same, not at all. Oprah Winfrey, okay. I remember being lying on a table, lying naked, having probes put around me, experiments done on me, looking in my eyes, my ears. So this happened to you, what, in the middle of the day? Are you Peter Faust, they happened at night time. Okay. So when you're sleeping. Or not sleeping. What happened was for me, the conscious memories that I had were in the middle of the night, I woke up, very conscious, walked over to my living room, saw something in the room, felt the white light, felt the paralysis, and then I fell asleep. Several hours later, I woke up and had these intense emotions associated with the experience that just I couldn't fathom. Like, why was I so scared? Why was I terrified what was Oprah Winfrey, you had a bad dream? That's what I thought. That's what I wanted to believe. That's what I wanted to believe for years. And I think that's what most people want to believe until and why do you want to believe that? Because because I don't want to think I'm abducted by aliens. That was the last thing I wanted in my life. This sounds like a bad tabloid story. It that's what it sounded like to me for a long time. Aha. Uh -huh. But Dr. Mac Tape recorded several of his therapy sessions with Peter, including one where Peter was under hypnosis. And during these sessions, Peter recalled his meetings with the aliens. We have a tape made by a Canadian film crew that shows the very first time Peter ever heard himself under hype hypnosis. So you will see Peter's reaction listening to the tape. You can hear Peter's voice describing on the tape what the aliens did to him. And you can see his reaction to hearing his own words. Just about 42 seconds, take a look. Peter Faust, on recording, they're locking me up. Panting, John Mack, on recording, okay. Peter Faust, on recording, I'm in my room in Hawaii. And they lifted me. Panting, oh. I'm Terry John Mack, on recording, terrified. Aha. Uh -huh. Peter Faust, on recording, they were and then the, inaudible, went outside. John Mack, on recording, you're terrified. M.M. Him. Peter Faust, on recording, panting, and I'm like this. They've got me. Panting, oh. Oh. Prolonged moaning, crying, panting, John Mack, on recording, Peter, just remember Peter Faust, on recording, I don't want to go. John Mack, on recording, you're gonna be okay. Just let it go. Let the feelings come. You're gonna come through this fine. Peter Faust, on recording, okay. John Mack, on recording, you're gonna be just fine. What was that like to hear it? What's it like to hear it now? It's easier now because I've heard it so many times. But it still brings up emotions. And that's what made me believe that something happened because I couldn't deny my emotions. I heard your own father didn't believe you until he heard the tape. Now, that is sort of what we call one of those blood-curdling screams, that's you know? Well, it's not that my father didn't believe me, but it's just to hear the story, it's hard to fathom. It's hard to accept. But when he saw the tape and heard the emotions associated with it, he knew there was something there. And for myself, that's I knew there was something real there. Dr. Mack, what does this all mean? What is all of this you know, the book, where you've talked to hundreds of patients and describe in detail what they say they have experienced? You, with your credentials, coming from Harvard, what do you think this all means? Well, let me explain first why I concluded this is not psychiatric, why these people are not psychiatrically disturbed. Well okay. Because I was concerned. When I first heard about this, I thought this must be madness. But when I heard that hundreds of thousands of people all over the country Oprah Winfrey, why not a publicity stunt? Why not just because these people, like Peter, I can't tell you how difficult it is to get people to go on television to talk about this. People are not interested in being before the public. They're very ashamed because they get ridiculed, humiliated about it. This is not something anybody does this is not a club anybody wants to belong to. This is not something people do because they want to be filmed or get on publicity. It's very difficult to get people to come forth and acknowledge they've had these experiences. Oprah Winfrey, yes. And I've I've read interviews of people who have come forward years ago who wished that they hadn't at this point. Go ahead. So when I heard of it, hundreds of thousands of people all over the country from various polls, we know, maybe even millions of people have had very similar experiences they don't know each other. The details that they're describing were not in the media. They have nothing to gain by it. They feel ashamed about it. That's number one. What I also heard, that this was occurring in children as young as two or three years old. That ruled out personality explanations. 
It's associated with UFOs independently observed by witnesses, by media, by neighbors. It's also associated with physical findings. And I said before, that people, when examined, are not psychiatrically disturbed. So the only thing that behaves like that is a real experience. Oprah Winfrey, yeah, you say dreams do not behave, that's trauma trauma, that it's trauma. John Mack, it's traumatic. Yeah. Real experiences are the only thing that occurs like that. Psychosis isn't like that. Madness is not like that. Dreams are not like that. Fantasy is not like that. Now, if these are real experiences, what is going on? What's the source of these experiences? Yeah, that's the question. What's going on?